What you see here are the weights. The weights apply the newtons of force that is needed to use simultaneously with the newton meters of torque. There are three weight settings that you'll need per the ISO 594 standards. One of them is 5 newtons, another is 20 newtons, and the last one is 27.5 newtons. Nice round number, I know. What we have here is four weights. Here are two. These are one newton weights, and these are used to make the five newton base weight. The base weight consists of the base weight consists of the chuck, the slide itself, and the weight stand on the top. Those pieces total three newtons. If your part that you're going to test is mm, a small little needle here, it has negligible weight and you'll be able to use that three newtons in conjunction with the wafers which fit on the weight stand to make five newtons and that then becomes your five newton base weight. That weight would be used or could be used in or testing in ISO 594-1. However, in ISO 594-2 and later in ISO 594-1, you will need either a 20 newton weight or a 27.5. In this case, we'll assume it's a 27.5. It will be the larger weight. It fits right on the weight stand, and we now have it set up for 27.5 newtons of force. Let's take this one step further. We'll take this off for now. We'll go back to the base weight. If the piece that you're going to test is a larger piece and this piece has no good way to hook up to this, this chuck, you're going to have to build a fixture to hold this. Something lightweight so that it, the fixture itself will fit into the chuck and then this piece will fit into that fixture. You will need the weight of this piece and your fixture so that you will know how to adjust. If the weight of the piece and the fixture is one newton, then you only need a single one newton wafer on the top. If your piece is two newtons, then you won't use either weight on the top to get to the 5 newton base weight. If your fixture and piece come up to be more than 2 newtons, you need to redesign so that you're lighter. But, and regardless, once you have your 5 newton base weight, whether it takes one additional wafer, none, or two, you add the other larger weight to get to the 27.5, and then you're all set to go. This piece here that I have shown you before is the adapter. This adapter, there's a square end that fits into the torque sensor. The other end has a thread on it that screws to a 1 8 NPT thread. The reference fittings, and this one is a figure 5, the reference fittings on one end, of course, have the, the lure test end. On the other end, they have an eighth inch NPT female thread. This eighth inch NPT female thread, as I said, will screw right on to this adapter. If you happen to have a reference fitting that does not have the eighth inch NPT female thread, a trip to the hardware store and you can get an adapter assuming that the uh, fitting has an eighth inch male pipe thread you can get an adapter uh, male female adapter and just screw that into the bottom of this and then you'll have the part that'll fit on so there's some adapting that might have to be made depending on what you have the bulk of the reference fittings do have eighth inch NPT 
some places, other countries, might have an M10 thread on the bottom, in which case you'll need, to, you need an adapter there as well. But once you get it on, just screw it on, put it on nice and tightly. Yeah. Hand tight's going to get the job done. And this is then ready to mount up on the machine itself. So you can just take this and we'll just bring it to the machine and it fits. You see there's a square hole right there. This just fits right into that square hole very nicely. Now a piece of caution, you do not want to assemble this reference fitting while it's on the torque sensor because the torque sensor is very sensitive to manual torque. By screwing this on while this is in place, you may put your torque sensor out of calibration or you may even break it. So always take the piece off, do the assembly, and then put the piece on. That's all there's to it. What you're looking at is the Motorized Torque Measurement System Digital Controller. There's several things on here. One is a speed button. This tells how fast the torque sensor will turn. Two is a counterclockwise button and three a clockwise button. You can hear it operate. I will make the... You can hear it going. And turn it faster. It'll go quite slow as well. So depending on what speed you find works best for you, that is not specified in the standard, so you'll have to just determine that on your own. Now we'll go up and look at the machine. There we go. Here we go. That's, that's slow. Very slow. And that's faster. So those are the ranges that you've got available to you with the machine. One thing to note, this cord that comes out of the torque sensor, as this torque sensor rotates, will get uh, wrapped around a little bit. It's not a big deal. It should never go more than once. But before you do your test, you'll want to rotate that backwards using the counterclockwise direction button until it's sitting over on the far side. And that'll give you plenty of room to run the test without that cord getting in the way.